Hey gang, welcome back to another episode of Gear and Gadget Reviews. I am Brian, and as usual, let's jump on into the next review for one of these portable power stations. Now guys, I have quite a few of these to review and I will just straight up be honest with you right off the bat and tell you I am crazy impressed with this particular um, power station little battery box unit from ITL. I hope I'm pronouncing that right but we'll go with ITL for this video. Now they sent this to me I you know I'm not going to turn them down if they want to send it to me and I'll do a review on them because I love these things but out of all the ones that I have and that I've tested so far this one has impressed me the most. Uh, overall build quality is amazing the functionality of it's great. The user interface is great. The It's just a good looking little unit. So um, let me show you what it looks like. Here's the packaging. I mean, no one really cares about the packaging, but it comes in a good quality box. You've got a nice hard case that it comes in that has all of the needed charging cords so this is a first they usually come in a little you know either a cardboard box or a little baggy but this is nice and then you get the actual unit itself and this is not light this is 500 watts 500 watt hour okay so here is the actual unit Okay, so I'm gonna put that to the side. And again, you got your little hard case of charging cords. Now, guys, this is a 500 watt hour unit. Again, it is a lithium iron phosphate unit. So it's not your typical lithium batteries like Jackery uses or some of the, the, the lower priced versions of these, of these have. Uh, lithium iron phosphate is really kind of the go-to that in my opinion, if you can get one at a good price, is gonna be the better battery. They have much longer lifespans, um, essentially. These, these typically can get um, 3,000 charges to 80%. And what that means is you can take this unit, use it from 100% to zero, approximately 3,000 times. Once you hit that 3,000th time, when you go to recharge it, you'll probably only get 80% of the battery. Now, are we ever gonna use this thing 3,000 times? You might, maybe, but uh, I can pr probably tell you if you use it that many times, this thing's gonna be beat to heck. So, you know, take that as it is. Now, regular lithium batteries, you know, you can typically get five to 800 full charge cycles before you're only gonna get 80% of the battery output. So that's why lithium iron phosphate batteries are, in my opinion, much better than just the standard lithium batteries. So, it, but it is heavier. It weighs, yeah, let's go with 19 pounds so this thing has a hundred and forty four thousand milliamp lithium iron phosphate battery you're gonna get a built-in battery management system so that's just kind of like the internal uh, chip inside it that's not gonna let you overcharge it's not gonna let you undercharge it's gonna protect those lithium iron phosphate cells when you charge it to not deplete them or to not ruin them essentially and it also has a built-in MPPT controller for when you plug in your solar panel it's going to not not also allow that solar panel to just fry these batteries because it's got a built-in MPPT controller in it. Uh, it does have a two-year warranty from date of purchase, so it's a little bit longer than some, a little bit less than the others, kind of right in the middle, but two-year manufacturing warranty on this thing. And as far as charging time goes, from 0%, when you plug in this AC wall outlet, you are going to get a zero to 100% charge on this thing within three and a half to four hours. And that's pretty amazing for 500 watts. So three to four hours of charge time on the AC power brick. If you're gonna use the DC charge cord, you're gonna get five hours from zero to 100%. And for one 100 watt solar panel, it's gonna take about eight hours. But this thing supports paralleled solar panels, but one 100 watt solar panel, about eight hours to recharge this thing to, to full. So I'm gonna throw up a screenshot so you can kind of get a better look of what this LCD screen will show you when you use it. So I'll show you that. So as you can see here on the screen, you're gonna have your power slash battery percentage indicator. You're gonna have your time to charge and your time to empty being displayed. You have a warning indicator. You have your temperature status indicator. You have your input and output wattage power indicator and you also have your port type usage so whatever port you're using is going to display if you're using usb or power delivery it's going to display that 
Just a quick screenshot of some of these specs. So you, you, you know, you'll see you'll have two AC outputs. You've got a DC output. You got two USB 10 watts. You've got one quick charge USB 20 watt port. You've got a type C power delivery 60 watt output one DC 5525 input for your solar panel. You've got one XT60 input for paralleling solar panels. And again, you can see that it weighs about 19 pounds and it is made out of aluminum alloy and of course plastic for the handles and whatnot. And it does have a little three watt LED light on it. So those are just kind of basic specs, but let me turn this thing on and let you kind of see what it looks like when you turn it on and kind of go through some of the functionality of it and hopefully give you guys a better idea of what it is. Okay, so I've got my AC ready to get plugged in and all you're gonna do to get this thing plugged in is plug it into your DC 5525 input. You can see the screen cuts on there, and I hope this is showing up on video. Again, these LCD screens don't always work the best. Okay, so you can see here, this is gonna be your battery monitor, your percentage, and right now I'm at 95% of my battery. Time to charge to 100% is 11 minutes. My input power right now, I am pulling 113, 112, 113 watts from the power brick itself being charged into the batteries on this unit. My output power is zero because I'm not running anything. And this little icon here is showing that the fan is running internally to you know, cool down those batteries while it charges. So let's go over some of these buttons here, guys. So you've got your main power on off button. You've got your button for your light here, which is gonna be over here on the side. And you've got multiple brightness levels. And of course your SOS signal. <laughs> Just so silly, but whatever, if you guys use that, cool. You've got your AC button, so you can turn on your, your inverter. You'll have to turn it on separately, and you do that by pressing this AC button. And then if you're gonna use any of these DC ports, you have to turn on the DC button that turns on all of these ports. This is gonna be your XT60 input for if you're gonna parallel solar panels. If you're only gonna be running one solar panel, you will plug it into this DC5525 port, same port you're gonna use for your AC brick to charge it. Then underneath here, you've got your 12 volt, 10 amp, cigarette style charging port, is regulated. And then again, your two AC outlet plugs. So I'm gonna unplug the charging because we don't need it. I'm at 96% and show you kind of and show you guys what it looks like when you plug things into this so you can see the different screen options. So I'm gonna take my phone here. I'm gonna plug it into one of the USB ports. And again, remember you have to turn on your, your DC button and you can see the USB out lights show up. I'm gonna plug this into my phone. Okay, and you can see now that this USB port is pulling roughly five watts right now. It's gonna fluctuate, it was up at seven watts, but that's just charging my phone directly. Okay, now let me get a DC cord. So this is a 5521 barrel adapter. We're gonna plug it into that. I'm gonna plug it into a little fan that I've got here. And that fan is now running and you'll see the wattage go up. So between my phone charging and this fan going, I'm pulling nine watts. And at this rate, I've got 36 to 37 hours until this thing is completely empty. Turn the fan up to high, and that wattage should go up a little bit. Yep, so I am at 11 watts now with the fan on high, my phone charging, and I'm averaging around, let's say 31 to 30 to 31 hours until this battery is drained to empty. iPhone's charging, fan on high is going. I'm gonna plug in a type C rapid charge cable and I'm gonna start charging my iPad as well. So you can see now with everything running, I am outputting around 35 watts. And that's gonna give me 10 hours of runtime for everything that I have going on right here if I didn't touch it. So, that kinda gives you an idea of what you can run. Again, this is a 500 watt hour battery unit. Okay, so I've got one of my Ryobi spotlights. I'm gonna plug it into one of these ports right here. I'm gonna turn on the AC. There we go. 
this light is now turned on and I am pulling 64 watts. So I've got iPad charging, iPhone charging, 12 volt fan on high, and a spotlight, and we're pulling a total of 65 watts. Again, if I were to keep everything the same, I would get 5.2 hours of runtime for all of this before this battery is depleted down to zero. Okay, so that's pretty much the overview on this ITL 500 watt lithium iron phosphate battery unit. I'm very impressed with it, guys. I'm not, they're not paying me to say this. They did send this to me, but um, I want to give my honest opinion. And again, I've got six or seven of these things that I'm currently in the process of reviewing, and this ranks up as, as one of the higher ones. I really do think this is a good unit. And if you got, I checked the website this morning, and there's a $100 coupon code off on this thing right now, which puts it at $399. I know that's not the cheapest cheapest and I know it's, it's a lot of money but if you compare it to other products on the market right now you're getting 500 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries with all the ports you'll ever need so I think this is a really good buy um, I don't get any kickback from the sale of that that's you just go straight to their website put your you know click your own coupon code and you get that hundred dollars off putting this thing at 399 so I think that's a I think that's a steal to be honest with you if you go look at the price of Jackeries Gold Zeros Blue Eddies you're gonna pay more than that for more for the same amount of watts. And again, the kicker is lithium iron phosphate batteries. So overall, the, the, the packaging, the presentation, the quality, you know, all full aluminum construction. But overall, guys, this is a really nice little unit. And also, if you guys are interested, again, I'm not getting paid to say this, ITIL did send me their 100 watt solar panel. And out of all of the ones that I have, again, this one has extremely impressed me. It is heavy. And I'll show you another 100 watt solar panel that I have and kind of show you the difference. But this thing weighs about 10 pounds, 10 to 11 pounds. It is heavy duty. And the overall just construction of this thing is awesome. You've got your zipper pocket here in the back. It comes with all of the ports that you could possibly ever need. You've got your six foot DC cable. It comes with some carabiners if you need to hang this thing up. And this is, you know, your box where you, where you plug all this stuff into and then into your battery. So it's not very sunny outside, but I might try to give you guys a little idea of what this 100 watt solar panel can do. So this is the other 100 watt panel that I have. It probably weighs four or five pounds. It is extremely light. Um, I did test this out a couple weeks ago and I was getting maybe 60 watts on a full sunny day. So I think it'll be fun for me to test out both of these and see how many watts I can get on this battery to charge it from the ITIL version versus this version. But what a great day to test solar panels. Okay, everyone, so the rain has gone. I've got the ITIL 100 watt solar panels placed up. I've got a four o'clock sun, so it's not the most perfect sun, but are we ever gonna really use this in perfect conditions? So I think this is gonna be a good example. So, and I've got the battery hiding over here in the shade, so hopefully I can get a screenshot of how many watts this thing's pulling. And that screen looks crazy wicked on my camera, but I'm getting 73 watts of power on a four o'clock sun using this ITIL 100 watt solar panel. So I'm gonna hook up the other 100 watt solar panel that I showed you guys, and let's see how much we get off of that. Okay, so I got the other 100 watt panel that I have here. So I don't even know, I haven't even looked at my battery yet to see what it pulls, so. We'll be the first to look. And guys, you're looking at that top right number, and I don't know if you can get it on screen, but this is showing 62 watts. Obviously, the efficiency on that ITL panel is much better. It's a bigger panel. So 73 to 75 watts of solar power being input into this battery unit on a four o'clock sun it's pretty good on a 100 watt panel. That's pretty good efficiency. So I'll take it any day of the week. So guys, that's it for this little review over the ITL 500 and the 100 watt solar panel. So if you have any questions, shoot me a comment, let me know. Take care.